And we believe that the fight for the struggle for freedom, the struggle for justice, is always going to bring about costs and sometimes very extreme costs. Now at 6, a month after protesters shut down part of I-5 through Seattle for nearly five hours, the state patrol believes that at least six of them should face charges. WSP says that number could go higher with 10 other people still under investigation. Let's get right to come with Michelle Esteban, who's live along I-5 with those details. Michelle? Yeah, a lot of people watching this case, guys, a really big development here. As you mentioned, State Patrol took a lot of heat over this because of what you said, the freeway, these northbound lanes, all of them came to a standstill from 1 in the afternoon until after 6 p.m. And to many folks who were caught in the middle, they could not understand the delay. For nearly a month, motorists who were caught in this wondered how it was even possible that traffic on I-5 could come to a complete standstill for nearly five hours, but it did. And when it was over, the protesters just walked away, even leaving their cars parked on the freeway. Now we know if State Patrol gets its way, at least six of those individuals will be charged and possibly ten more. For me, it is... For the fight for a free Palestine, it is worth it to get arrested. It's worth it to lose my job. It is worth it to even die. Hossam Nasser blocked the interstate that day. He said his group showed up to support those who organized the rally. We are not easily scared and we are not easily intimidated. State Patrol heavily criticized for not acting fast enough, insisted it took time. They had only one unverified report of a possible freeway closure and didn't know who or where and responded with public safety in mind. We don't know what specific charges, but State Patrol has said prior to these situations, the most likely charge is for disorderly conduct, a misdemeanor. WSP's Director of Communications in an email acknowledged that could be an unsatisfying resolution for those seeking more serious charges given the significant disruption caused, but said we must consider and should only consider all applicable laws. And, and uh, there would be a hope that, that perhaps they would be um, work as a deterrent. Ned Headley's law firm represents some of the drivers who are considering filing a lawsuit against the protesters. He says while they have a constitutional right to assemble, they don't have a right to break the law. Mass protests blocking a highway is, is not something that um, it should be allowed. Now, we do not know who those six protesters are or even what role they played. But I should point out, State Patrol can recommend as much as they like, but it is the decision of the King County prosecutor whether or not to file charges. We expect the prosecutor's office to get the case. That is the evidence that State Patrol detectives have put together by the end of this week. We'll keep following this for you. Reporting live, I'm Michelle Esteban, Como News. Michelle, thank you. That I-5 protest wasn't the first time that Palestinian activists have blocked a major roadway in our area. A little over a week ago, a group of about 200 people marched through downtown Bellevue at one point, shutting down Bellevue Way for about two hours. And in December, it was a similar scene in Seattle. About 100 protesters shut down the University Bridge for three and a half hours during the evening commute. At last check, we haven't heard of any arrests or charges being filed in either of those cases. The I a free Palestine protest took to the back streets of Eugene today. About 30 people carrying Palestinian flags and wearing masks rallied at the intersection of Good Pasture Island Road and Good Pasture Loop, marching up to a building where real estate company Remax has offices. The protesters claimed Remax was involved in illegal land sales, loudly chanting and singing outside the building. Eugene police were on the scene, making sure none of the protesters entered or vandalized the building. This is breaking news on 2 News at 10. Breaking now at 10, a pro-Palestine protest has moved from the University of Utah to outside the Salt Lake County Jail. Demonstrators have gathered for nearly three hours now. Thanks for joining us. For 2 News at 10, I'm Heidi Hatch. And I'm Mark Cabell.
This is video from just a few hours ago. Take a look. Police arrested one of the protesters in President's Circle up at the U. Now, this arrest is the reason the group moved to the Salt Lake County Jail. And here is what happened as police took that protester into custody. Take a listen. The university tells us this person was arrested based on three charges from yesterday, along with a charge of resisting arrest today. Yeah, we have team coverage for you tonight. We begin with Jim Spiewak, who's live outside the Salt Lake County Metro Jail tonight, where they're demanding the release of that protester. Jim, what's happening there tonight? Well, it's pretty quiet out here right now. We got here between 6.30 and 7 o'clock when there were only a couple protesters, but it quickly grew, by our estimation, to a couple hundred. Go ahead and take a look over our shoulder right here. There's maybe two dozen or so protesters that are going to wait out here until one of they are saying one of their key leaders in this protest movement gets released from jail. They're saying that that, that, that was what the person that was arrested earlier today. Let's go ahead and show you some video from this protest from a little bit earlier. Again, by our estimation, at least a couple hundred people out here. Now, we asked one of the leaders out here why they decided to move from the University of Utah to the jail. They said that they moved over here in response to police repression by arresting key leaders of their movement. They go on to say that they think the university is scared of them and trying to repress their movement, and they will not leave the jail grounds until their leader, who they say got arrested, is released from jail here. We also asked one of the leaders on why they are so passionate about this movement. Here's what he said. Because I understand it affects all of us. You know, Americans, hard workers, they spend eight, nine, ten hours a day working. And their hard-earned tax dollars, they go to fund genocide, they go to fund war, to bomb hospitals, schools. And that money could be used here for housing, education. So things did say very peaceful out here throughout the entire day. Right where we're standing right here, there is a ramp. These are where people that are processed and released come out. That's why that group is staying right here. Just to give you a quick scene or set scene from earlier today, about a couple hundred people showed up right here. They did walk up this ramp right here. They quickly came back down. They then got into the street here. They walked down a couple hundred yards. They then came back. Deputies told them that they were going to have to leave because they were interrupting the normal uh, process of the jail operations, but deputies did stay here for a little while. They recently just left because things out here, as you can see, are very, very quiet. So it stayed peaceful out here. They did their chant. They did their protest, and now they're waiting out here for one of their leaders to be released. Guys, back to you. All right, Jim, thank you. A far cry from what we saw at the same time last night. Protesters at Columbia University in New York violently took over a campus building early this morning. Yeah, Jamie McGriff uh, on the live desk with the very latest on how police put an end to the occupation tonight. Jamie? Well, the NYPD moved in on pro-Palestinian protesters on Columbia University's campus. And uh, even tonight, this started around 9 p.m. local time after getting permission from the school to enter. A dramatic scene unfolded as police brought in a large vehicle with an extended ramp to gain entry to a second floor window of the Hamilton Hall. School officials say that it was occupied by protesters. Officers pried open the windows and dozens of police went through that window. And it comes after groups of demonstrators forced their way into the hall and then locked themselves inside early this morning. Little history note here, back in 1968, this building was occupied by anti-Vietnam War press protesters. Now, there were reports of arrests being made, footage coming in, the last few hours, what you're looking at right now, showing buses leaving campus with protesters on board. Columbia warned students on campus to shelter in place for your safety amid the heightened police presence. And New York City Mayor Eric Adams says there are serious public safety concerns at the university, and that's why he is asking those who are protesting the war in Gaza to leave the area. We have sounded the alarm numerous times before about external actors who are attempting to hijack this pro protest. Tonight, we're here to show you some example of these external actors who have no, no affiliation with Columbia, Columbia University, as well as some of our other ed educational 
facilities. A law enforcement official tells CNN that at least half of the protesters at Columbia are not affiliated with the school. Condemnation of uh, campus protest clashes with authorities has come from both Republican and Democratic lawmakers and the Biden White House. Columbia is threatening student demonstrators with suspension if they don't sign a form promising to follow school policies. On the live desk, I'm Jamie McGriff. All right, Jamie, thank you very much. Meanwhile, the student-led protests are demanding the University of Utah divest itself from Israel. But does a Utah state law prevent that from happening? Ariel Harrison live tonight from a much quieter University of Utah tonight to explain. Ariel. Yes, a much quieter school tonight. Uh, while students moved to the jail following the arrest of one of their leaders, their message tonight remains the same. They want to see the university cut any financial ties to Israel. I spoke with a lawmaker who explains what a fairly recent law spells out when it comes to boycotting Israel. Well, we're not afraid. We came back here to demonstrate. Pro-Palestine rally supporter Denise Weaver says their message, despite numerous arrests, still rings true. We're demanding our university divest from um, manufacturing and sending and investing money in companies that directly contribute to the genocide of Palestinians. Their calls are for the university to divest from Israel. Not unprecedented and not impossible. Chris Nelson, a spokesman from the U, says while the university did divest from South Africa in the 80s, he feels this situation is different. I think this inherently is more complicated. I, I think this would not be a conversation just with the university, it would be a conversation with state leaders. Utah's Anti-Boycott Israel Act took effect three years ago. It supports the nation by protecting economic ties with the U.S. This law doesn't specifically prohibit the U from divesting in Israel like they did in South Africa in the 80s, but I think that if the U chose to do that, I think they'd probably be stepping on the legislature's toes. Weiler says the legislation is more of a message bill and essentially says they don't want to reward people who boycott the Jewish state. I'm pro-Israel. I think I think every country, including Israel, can should be able to defend itself from acts of terrorism. You know, the U kind of comes up to the legislature every year and is asking us for bills or for more money for, for their you know pet projects. And so I, I think it, it probably politically would be an unwise. Now, coming back out here live, the spokesman confirmed that the U has just over one and a half billion dollars in investment funds. Students involved in these particular protests we've been covering the last couple of days here at the university and now tonight at the jail, they would like to see those funds unaffiliated with Israel completely. Reporting live from University of Utah, Ariel Harrison, KUTV 2 News. Good evening, I'm John Purvis. CBS 4 On Your Side has obtained a body cam video from last week's police response to the pro-Palestinian protest at NMSU that led to the arrest of nearly a dozen people. CBS 4 attends Ariana Pada is in Las Cruces tonight to show you the video and break down what happened as police made arrests. Well, it's been exactly one week since police arrested 11 pro-Palestinian demonstrators who performed a sit-in right here on campus. Now, we did get body camera video today, and it's over two hours long. After sifting through the video, we compiled the most confrontational, which shows one man allegedly spitting at an officer. Go and take a look. In this body camera video, you can see Michael Garcia banging on the doors of the Hadley administration building on NMSU campus. And as Sergeant Tristano goes back into the building, you can both see and hear Garcia allegedly spitting towards Tristano. It happens fast, so let's slow it down. The door opens, and on the right side of your screen, you can see the spit fly, prompting Tristano to take Garcia to the ground and handcuff him. You can see Garcia then carried by four officers to the police unit. Garcia now is facing three charges, and that was just one of the 11 arrests made. But moments before... We are not here to infringe on your First Amendment rights and freedom of speech. It's just now that after 5 o'clock in this business, or this building, we've got to ask you guys to leave. Officers are seen asking protesters to leave the building that had been closed for an hour, issuing one final warning. <laughs> Knowing that they would be arrested, the group clings together as police begin to separate them one by one and make arrests. Go, go but with all doors leading out blocked, yeah, 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 yeah. 
by outside protesters. Units are going to come in now tied up with the four units on this side. To get them out, we can. Police work to lead those arrested inside out before taking them back to the station. And I think the two spots men are right there. NMSU officials say that of the 11 people arrested, only five of them were enrolled at the university. Meantime, the encampment that was located here on campus appears to be gone. Reporting in Las Cruces, Ariana Parra, CBS4 at 10. Well, the thing is, is that this is a riot. It's kind of so really doing something. This is not working. This is just pissing people off. New at 10 o'clock tonight, we're getting a glimpse of exactly what happened during last month's pro-Palestinian protests on UT Austin's campus. From the point of law enforcement, we've obtained body camera footage from several troopers on the ground showing the events that unfolded April 24th. It's a story you'll see first on CBS Austin. Abigail Velez joins us live tonight after spending the day going through all of that footage and speaking with people who have watched the same videos but have different interpretations of what they saw. Abigail, what are they telling you tonight? Well, Walt, I spoke to a law enforcement advocate and a member of UT Austin's Palestinian Solidarity Committee. Both tell me that watching that body camera footage is difficult because it was a tough moment for everyone involved. But that was about the only thing that they agreed on. One tells me that the force used by law enforcement was justified, while another tells me it was excessive. For the first time, we're getting a closer look at what happened at the University of Texas at Austin on April 24th. It was the first day of pro-Palestinian protests on campus, with the demonstrations lasting more than five hours, eventually leading to the arrest of at least 34 people. Get up! Why am I being arrested? In an open records request, CBS Austin obtained body camera footage from the Texas Department of Public Safety troopers who responded to the protests. When are y'all gonna call this a riot? It is. Many have described the scene as chaotic, out of control, and violent. Reviewing the footage is bringing back the heightened emotions from that time. At least that's what Dennis Ferris and Adam say as I sat with them and watched the videos. It's quite ridiculous. I wish none of this had happened. Dennis is the president of the Austin Police Retired Officers Association. He spent most of his life working as an APD officer and says he watched this footage from his perspective as a policeman. They're going in there to uh, to basically pull them out of the crowd and make the arrest. And the initial thing you see is some of them resisting. The easiest way to control somebody is to get control of their hands and their legs. Even if you don't feel like an arrest is lawful, you can't resist it. Overall, Dennis says the law enforcement presence was justified. I don't see excessive force here. But it's a different story for Adam, a member of UT Austin's Palestinian Solidarity Committee. Clear video evidence submitted by the DPS is the DPS officers themselves who are clearly agitating a peaceful protest by forcefully arresting students. In this video, you can see Texas DPS using their batons to push back on protesters, something Adam remembers clearly from that day. These students clearly are not doing anything wrong. They're simply standing there and they're getting pushed away. They have a right to assemble on campus and uh, that's clearly being violated right here. But for Adam, this runs deeper than law enforcement response. He's focused on the purpose of the protest that day. This tells me that these state troopers, our governor, our president at this university is more invested in the state of Israel than he is with the welfare of his own students. This demonstrates that perfectly. Now, in total, about 130 people have been arrested at pro-Palestinian protests that have taken place all over Austin just within the last few weeks. Now, in a statement on April 24th, Texas DPS said they responded to the campus, quote, at the request of the university and under the direction of Governor Greg Abbott in order to prevent unlawful assembly and support UT police in maintaining peace. Reporting live in Austin, Abigail Velez, CBS Austin News. the commencement at the University of Chicago today. The demonstration comes as the university withholds degrees from four students after they participated in pro-Palestinian encampments on campus. The university confirms one person was arrested. CBS 2's Darius Johnson is live in the control room with the tension that kicked up once again there on campus. Darius? 
Hey there, Chris. Good evening. We saw tensions on campus nearly four weeks ago when a pro Palestinian encampment was dismantled in the early morning hours. Today's protest was a result of that and the university's decision to withhold degrees from four students who have expressed their support for Gaza. Shame on you. Protests flaring at the University of Chicago once again. During the graduation ceremony, students walked out. Outside the ceremony, pro-Palestinian protesters tried to access a blocked street and were met by police. The university says a small number of protesters acted violently and one protester unaffiliated with the university was arrested. All of this as the university withheld the degrees of four students, including Yousef Haswa. They're claiming I may have been involved in the encampment, that I may have been disruptive, yet there's nothing substantial that that they've shown us. They haven't shown us any of the complaints. They haven't told us the exact statue that we've disrupted. He and the other three were allowed to walk, but they were not granted their degrees. The university says it's because they've received multiple complaints about the encampment and its disruptive conduct. Now a policy and conduct investigation is underway for the four students. And I was expecting to go, go on with my job hunt and get, have opportunities now that I'm a graduate of one of the world's most elite institutions, and now I'm none of that. Um, and I don't think any of that will happen. Haswa was among hundreds during the eight days of the pro-Palestinian encampment. And on the day it was dismantled, May 7th, he was front and center, a decision he said he does not regret as he stands with the students in Gaza. I have no regrets. I'll do this over and over again if I have to. I will complete every credit hour again. I will do my last final and still be told that I won't get my diploma and still do it all over again. Um, these four years mean nothing to me if I'm not standing for Palestine and not actively telling the university that their investments are wrong. The four students are still calling for the university to disclose and divest from companies with ties to Israel. We know thousands of students and faculty members have signed a petition calling on the university to grant the four students their degrees. As for the university, for that one person who was arrested, they're currently seeking battery charges, and that protester was not a student or a staff member. That's the very latest in the control room tonight. I'm Darius Johnson. Chris, back to you in studio. Okay, Darius, thanks very much. Happening today outside of the White House, a crowd of pro-Palestine demonstrators demanding a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. In this latest rally to bring an end to the Israel-Hamas war, organizers say they are demanding that President Biden act on his promises and suspend all aid to Israel. Protesters carried a two-mile-long red banner to represent the so-called Red Line. Now, today marks month eight of the war. Observers say it cost the lives of over 36,000 Palestinian people including over 15,000 children. Scuffles in the street of a largely Jewish neighborhood Sunday after pro-Palestinian protesters gathered outside a synagogue, swiftly met by counter-protesters. They've come to our home, they're coming attacking us. The Jews of Los Angeles are no longer safe, claims the United Jewish Coalition, a pro-Israel group. <laughs> They say things like Intifada Revolution. They're talking about killing people. Someone give me a straight to the house. Unclear who started the violence. A real estate fair at the Adas Torah Synagogue staged by an agency that markets property in Israel appears to have been the focus of protest. The temple's director of security says the synagogue rented out the space but had no affiliation with the real estate event. Some counter-protesters did taunt the pro-Palestinian protesters with this. Since the Hamas terror attacks of October 7th and the subsequent Israeli assault on Gaza, anti-Semitic and Islamophobic incidents are on the rise across the country. And there have been countless pro-Palestinian protests on city streets, on college campuses, some violent, but very few outside a house of worship with claims that the entrance to the synagogue was blocked. L.A. Mayor Karen Bass called this violence abhorrent. President Joe Biden tweeted, intimidating Jewish congregants is dangerous, unconscionable, anti-Semitic and un-American. I don't think the Jewish people will go in front of a mosque or, or Christian people go in front of a mosque to do such a thing. I'm meant to be intimidated. Yeah, disrupted for sure. This is intimidating. Jews say they feel intimidated here where they live.